Inshallah, we'll be reading from verse number 60 of Surah Ghafir, known as Surah Al Mu'min, page number 638 of the Noble Quran. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وقال ربكم ادعوني أستجب لكم إن الذين يستكبرون عن عبادتي سيدخلون جهنم داخرين الله الذي جعل لكم الليل لتسكنوا فيه والنهار مبصرا إن الله لذو فضل على الناس ولكن أكثر الناس لا يشكرون ذلكم الله ربكم خالق كل شيء لا إله إلا هو فأنا تؤفكون كذلك يؤفك الذين كانوا بآيات الله يجحدون الله الذي جعل لكم الأرض قرارا والسماء بناء وصوركم وصوركم فأحسن صوركم ورزقكم من الطيبات ذلكم الله ربكم فتبارك الله رب العالمين هو الحي لا إله إلا هو فادعوه مخلصين له الدين الحمد لله رب العالمين قل إني نهيت أن أعبد الذين تدعون من دون الله لم ما جاءني البينات من ربي وأمذت أن أسلم لرب العالمين هو الذي خلقكم من تراب ثم من نطفة ثم من علقة ثم يخرجكم طفلا ثم يخرجكم طفلا ثم لتبلغوا أشدكم ثم لتكونوا شيوخا ومنكم من يتوفى من قبل ولتبلغوا أجلا مسمى ولعلكم تعقلون هو الذي يحيي ويميت فإذا قضى أمرا فإنما يقول له كن فيكون ألم تر إلى الذين يجادلون في آيات الله أنا يصرفون الذين كذبوا بالكتاب وبما أرسلنا به رسلنا فسوف يعلمون إذ الأغلال في أعناقهم والسلاسل يسحبون في الحميم ثم في النار يسجرون ثم قيل لهم أين ما كنتم تشركون من دون الله قالوا ضلوا عنا بل لم نكن ندعو من قبل شيئا كذلك يضل الله الكافرين ذلكم بما كنتم تفرحون في الأرض بغير الحق وبما كنتم تمرحون ادخلوا أبواب جهنم خالدين فيها فبئس مثوى المتكبرين فاصبر إن وعد الله حق فإما نرينك بعض الذين نعدهم أو نتوفينك فإلينا يرجعون بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his companions, all his household, and every single one of us. May Allah bless us all. 
My brothers and sisters, or should I say my mothers and sisters, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us every form of goodness. The verse I have started with this morning is connected to dua, supplication and prayer. Every one of us needs to call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we all have our needs that no one can fulfill besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember, He created us. He is in full control of everything that happens to us. He knows why things happen to us. He has placed us in this world in order to test us. And this is what we believe as mu'mineen. So whilst we are allowed to enjoy what is in the dunya, as we've been saying all along, we must make sure that we pass the test in a way that we have prepared for the akhirah. It is natural when a person is born and they grow up that they start worrying about the house they're going to live in and the conveyance they have, how they look, their clothing, their food. These are needs that Allah has placed. If Allah wanted, He would never have allowed us to see hunger. So we would not need food. If that was the case, perhaps we wouldn't need to earn. If He wanted, He would have made us from those who did not need a home or a house or conveyance and so on. But He created us in such a unique way that we automatically feel hungry. We need to eat. In order to eat, you need to get some food. In order to get some food, you need to uh, give something to someone so that you can get that in return. And this is where trade comes in. And in order to do that, you need to have something yourself. So you need to make use of the energy and the ability that Allah has given you in order to survive. Subhanallah. In order to survive, you need to make use of the ability that Allah has blessed you with. And this itself is a lesson for us all to say the same ability. Make sure that you have used it in order to survive the life of the Akhirah, not to be cast into hellfire forever. So this is why this is a small test ground known as dunya or this world. It lasts a few years, perhaps 70 years on average. And what happens is during this time, Allah has, if we have to think carefully, Allah has created us in such a way that automatically we will be able to know that whatever we do in this world in terms of earning materialistically and so on or how we use our health and so on it will benefit us in the world or it will harm us and it will also benefit us after we die or it will harm us so in the same way that we know that the money we've kept with us is going to be distributed to others after we've died and we all know this very well we also all know that the day we die our health no matter how good it was before that, is gone and gone for good. And it's irrelevant. Your body becomes absolutely irrelevant. It goes back into the soil. So from this we learn that there is a bigger picture. Allah wants us to prepare for akhirah, for the life after, the eternal life. And evidence is that those who have died have died longer than they ever lived. Those who died perhaps more than a hundred years back have not lived for a hundred years. So they lived for 70 years, they died more than 100 years ago, and we have now come after them. We need to learn a lesson that they have been dead longer than they were alive. Allahu Akbar. So what did they prepare? That's between them and Allah. What I prepare between me and Allah. I'm not answerable to you and you are not answerable to me. But we help one another, we encourage one another, and we are answerable to Allah. Ultimately, Allah is going to ask us, how did you dress? What did you do? Did you worship me alone? Did you follow the messenger? Did you add your own innovated acts of worship and believe that that was the way when I sent you a messenger to show you how I wanted to be worshipped and so on. So this is something of utmost importance that we need to continue considering, looking into and working towards. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen us. Now, in the interim, Allah has made us such that we will recognize him, we will call out to him and we will understand our helpless nature and his independent nature. So Allah says, وَقَالَ رَبَّ and your Rabb has said, your Rabb, Rabbun means the one who created you, the one who nourishes you, the one who brought you up, the one who provided for you, the one who still provides for you, the one who is in control of every aspect of your existence. He is known as Rabbun. So, Waqala Rabbukum, your Rabb, your Rabb has said, Ud'uni, call out to me. Call out to me. Astajib lakum. I will definitely answer you. Now, when will I answer you? It's up to me. How will I answer you? It's up to me. Will I give you exactly what you want or something slightly different or better? It's all up to me. But you need to keep on calling out to me. You are not allowed to lose hope in the mercy of Allah. It's part of our test. So, for example, a person who is sick and ill, sometimes Allah keeps them sick and ill because had they been uh, restored in terms of health, perhaps they might forget Allah once again. So this is why we say, call out to Allah 
not only when you are in need, but even during the smooth days, everything is moving perfectly well. Call out to Allah, thank Him, ask Him for more, ask Him to protect you, ask Him to bless you with whatever you have and even more, and, to, and ask Him not to take away what He has given you. Be thankful to Allah. So this is why Allah says, Ud'uni. Call out to me. Astajib lakum. I promise you I will respond to you. So he hears us when we call out to him. Ya Allah have mercy on us. He hears us. He knows. He will have that mercy on us. He records it or it is recorded and we will definitely see its fruit. And this is why those who kept on calling out to Allah, even if they did not see immediate results, when they die, they will see the reward of that calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the minute I say, Oh my Rabb, Oh my Maker, I'm acknowledging His status. The minute I say, Ya Allah, grant me cure, I'm acknowledging that in His hands is cure. Oh Allah, save my child. Oh Allah, grant me offspring. Oh Allah, grant me sustenance. I'm acknowledging that He is the owner of everything. So this is part and parcel of worship. So sometimes when our life is extremely smooth and everything is going well and we're wealthy and healthy and you know we, everything looks too sweet and smart, Allah loves us enough to change that for us so that we turn to Him before we die. Allahu Akbar. What's the point? What is the point of having the most beautiful life and forgetting that there is a life after death? You just have to look at a dead person who was a friend of yours and you will be able to see that their body is completely lifeless, totally lifeless. Where did they go? They went somewhere. They are somewhere. They definitely are somewhere. Now, did they prepare for that day? That's between them and Allah. We ask Allah to forgive them. But don't forget that you need to prepare for the same day. Sometimes we make so much of istighfar for other people. You know, when a person passes away, people gather sometimes at the house of the deceased. May Allah grant them all Jannah. And people start making lots of dua and they say, okay, we want to do this and we want to do that. Forgetting themselves. If your dress code has changed and your worship of Allah has changed positively and everything else has changed, your following of the sunnah of Muhammad wasallam has changed positively, then you've learned a lesson from that death. And guess what? They will probably be getting a reward because it was through something that happened to them that you learned a lesson. Allahu Akbar. May Allah grant us all goodness. So Allah says, call out to me and I will answer you. And if you do not call out, you are known as a person who's proud. You know, sometimes you need something. May Allah protect us. This happens in the house a lot of times. Some people expect you to automatically understand what they want. Now that is an insult because they won't. It's, it's simple. Allah gave you a mouth and a voice. Talk to them. Say, please, can you make me a cup of tea? You don't just look at the glass, look at the milk, look at the fridge and look at your wife. And keep on looking at all, of the, all three of them quicker and quicker and make the circle faster and faster and pretend like the tea is suddenly going to pop up and say, Ploom, here it is. You need to speak. You need to say something. Because you are too arrogant to open your mouth to admit that you cannot make that cup of tea or you would like it. Don't be that. Oh, Allah gave you a mouth. All you needed to do is say sweet words, however you want to address your spouse. The sweetest words you can because the, the, the better the tea will be and the quicker it will come, I think. So my mothers and sisters, you say, please can you make me a cup of tea? Mashallah, I really enjoy you know, the cup of tea that you make, the way you strike the balance. Whatever you have to say, you say it. And the tea will come with a smile. But if you're not prepared to talk, what will happen? It's called arrogance. So Allah says, Inna yastakbiruna an ibadati. In the first part of the verse, Allah is talking of calling out to Allah. And in the second part, He says, Those who are arrogant, those who are proud, too proud to worship me, too proud to worship Allah, too proud to call out to Allah. From this verse, we learn that calling out to Allah is worshipping Allah. To ask Allah is worshipping Allah. Because He says, Yastakbiruna an ibadati. Those who are too proud to worship me, my worship. Too proud to engage in it. They will be granted entry. They will be made to enter hellfire in humiliation whilst being humiliated completely. May Allah protect us from this. So my mothers and sisters call out to Allah. Call out to Him again and again. And whenever you have a difficulty, a problem, remember that Allah loves you because He wants you to call out more and more. You get up for tahajjud and so on. I remember there was... Uh, Subhanallah, a certain person diagnosed with a certain disease and when I met them, they told me the good thing that has come out of this whole thing is I've come so close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Well, for me and you, why do we need to wait for a sickness before we get close to Allah? What if He takes us away without us seeing a long sickness? This is why sickness and illness is actually a gift of Allah. Those who die after prolonged illness stand a greater chance to be forgiven by Allah than those who have suddenly just died. 
Because those who died after long illness have had a chance to get closer to Allah that was greater than those who suddenly died. So it's up to us who are healthy to continue to worship Allah and to call out to Him. Beautiful, beautiful. Subhanallah, what a powerful encouragement from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, just call out to me. Part of your worship is to call out to me. The, the, the fact that you are humble, or should I say the humbleness that you have, humility is proven through the fact that you are calling out to us. So call out to Allah. It's your humbleness. Oh Allah, grant me. Oh Allah, bless me. Oh Allah, whatever I have is from you. Oh Allah, it is not me, not my brain. You have given me my own brain. So oh Allah, whatever I have achieved through this intellect, it's only through you. You know, there are certain people who say, whatever I got is from my intellect, not from Allah. But they forget that they should say, whatever I have is from my intellect. My intellect was given to me by Allah, which means whatever I've got is from Allah. That's the complete equation. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and may He make us from those who realize and understand. So, in the next part, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us what He's made for us. He made everything for us. And He's telling us, look, to be humble, do not be arrogant, worship me and continue worshiping me, me alone and me directly. Allah did not say, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ مُدْعُونِ In fact, He said, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ مُدْعُونِ أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ He said, Your Rabb has said, call out to me, I will answer you. He didn't say, Your Rabb said, call out to a pious person and he will call out to us and then we will answer him and he will give you. He didn't say that there should be an intermediary between you and him. No. He said, you call out to me, O my worshippers. وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ Your Rabb has said, call out to me, I will give you. So you call out to Allah direct. And Allah will give you and me. May Allah grant us all. And may Allah accept us. This is the beauty of Islam. This is entirely what Islam is based upon. It's called monotheism. Worshipping Allah and Allah alone. Now let's read the next few verses because they're all quite connected. So Allah says, Allahu ladhi ja'ala lakum. Allah has created for you. Ja'ala here means to create. So Allah has created for you. Allah has made for you. Al-layla, the night. Allah has made for you the night. So the night is made for who? For you. In order to do what? In order to rest. That you may rest therein. لِتَسْكُنُوا fi. Allahu Akbar. Allah has made the night for you in order that you rest. Science has proven that the rest of the night is far more valuable and quenching than the rest during the daytime. Subhanallah. And the earlier parts of the night are better than the late, later parts of the night. And this is why we should be up and praying in the last part of the night. So Allah says... Allah has created for you from what he made for you is the night and the night he made it so that you can rest in it subhanallah wan nahara mubsiran and he created for you the day so that you can see so that there is daylight one of these are not the only reasons why he created night and day but these are some of the reasons he has created night and day wan nahara mubsira inna allah ladhu fadlin ala nas these are just two gifts allah made mention of the night and the day in this verse, and Allah is saying, Oh, look, Allah is full of bounty to mankind. Allah is full of bounty to mankind. He has given mankind everything, so much He has given mankind, but many of mankind are not thankful. Ingratitude shown by man. May Allah forgive us. This is why when someone does a favor for you or to you, you need to understand that to thank them is part of being thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah used your friend, your brother, your sister, your parent, your child or anyone else to do something good to you. If you say, may Allah reward you, you are acknowledging that they have done something good to you and that Allah has allowed them to do that good. So like we say, don't just stop halfway through the equation. Complete the equation until it gets to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make sure that you understand ultimately it's all from Allah. So Allah says, I've created for you the night so that you can rest and the day that you can see. And indeed, Allah is bountiful. Allah is full of bounty to mankind. But most of mankind give no thanks. They're not thankful. But guess what? Allah does not need our thanks. We need to be thankful to Allah. Which Lord can ever tell you that only by thanking me is already an act of worship? He doesn't need the thanks. Allah does not need it. Whether we thank Him or not, He still has and He will probably still give and continue giving. Even those who do not deserve, He keeps on giving them. But if you thank, in another verse Allah says, la in shakartum la azidannakum. If you are to thank, I will grant you more. I will give you much more. I will give you increase. Allahu Akbar. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says, Thalikumullah. That is Allah. 
That is Allah. Who is Allah? He is the one who gives you even if you are not thankful. And He is the one who has created the night for you for certain reasons and the day for you for certain reasons. And He continues giving and He is the one who is full of bounty to mankind. So Allah says, ذَلِكُمُ Allah, رَبُّكُمْ This is Allah or that is Allah, your Rabb. He is your Rabb. He made you. خَالِقُ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ He created absolutely everything. La ilaha illahu. Do you know what that means? There is none worthy of worship besides Him. Don't worship anyone besides Allah. That's what it means. There is none worthy of worship besides Allah. فَأَنَّا تُؤْفَكُونَ Allahu Akbar. How then are they turning away? How then are they creating a fabrication? How then are they worshipping others besides Allah? They know Allah made them. Those people they worship did not make them. They know they are going to return to Allah. They are not going to return to those others that they are worshipping. Whether they be sticks, stones or uh, uh, saints or whatever else. Prophets, angels. People worship all sorts of things. The sun, the moon. Allah says all of them fall in one bracket. You worship Allah alone or you worship besides Allah. So some people worship Allah alone, some people worship besides Allah alone, and some people worship a mixture of both. The winners are only those who worship Allah and Allah alone. Here is the verse, and there are so many verses. When we say, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah, do you know what it means? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It means there is none worthy of worship besides Allah. Why say that when we are worshipping others besides Allah? So where is the declaration of faith? There is none worthy of worship besides Allah. There is no one worthy of worship besides Allah. That's what I used to say when I was a little kid in grade one. And I'm sure we all used to. I even know the tune that we used to say it in. Subhanallah. But as we grow up, we start worshipping things. We worship our desires, our fancies. That also becomes a God besides Allah. Because Allah says, أَفَرَأَيْتَ مَنِ اتَّخَذَ إِلَاهَهُ هَوَاهُ Have you seen the one who has taken his own desires, his own intellect as a God besides Allah? So that proves that there are people who worship their own brains. Be careful. We are mu'mineen, we are believers. There is a distinct difference in understanding between those who believe and those who don't believe. We believe. We believe in the unseen. We believe that when we die, we are going to get in a return of whatever we've done in this world and we hope for the mercy of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So for as long as you've tried throughout your life, by, by the will of Allah, that trial will never be wasted. It will always bear fruit. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah says, Allahu rabbukum. This is Allah. That is Allah, your Lord. Your Rabb, the one who created you, the one who nourishes, cherishes, provides, protects, the one who's in control, the one who cures, the one who gives you security, the one who sustains everything. He is the one who created absolutely everything. There is none worthy of worship besides Him. How dare they turn away then? How dare they create a fabrication? Or you create a fabrication? How dare you turn away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? كَذَلِكَ يُؤْفَكُ الَّذِينَ كَانُوا بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ يَجْحَدُونَ Thus were turned away those who used to deny the proofs and evidence. Those who used to deny the proofs, verses, evidences, lessons and so on of Allah. They were turned away the same way. They fabricated in a similar way. What happened to them? Allahu Akbar. Thus were those before you deluded who were rejecting the signs of Allah. That's the translation in the Sahih International Version. Subhanallah. Or should I say translation. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. My mothers and sisters, now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, look at what else I have created for you. Allah alladhi ja'ala lakumul ard qararan. It is Allah. It is Allah who made for you the earth a place of settlement. And the sky, a structure or a ceiling, and formed you and perfected your forms. So here he's mentioning three things. He made the earth so that you can settle on it. Beautiful. Look how we, you know, we live on the earth. Allah created the skies as a canopy. Subhanallah. Plural and singular, both. Skies and sky. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says samawat and in other places he says sama'a. He speaks of the skies. It also refers to the heavens. It also refers to the direction, upward direction. Subhanallah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it is Allah who made for you. It is Allah who made for you the earth. 
place of settlement. Thank Allah. And in that earth, guess what he placed? He placed that which will be of value whilst you live in this world, but it loses its value the moment you close your eyes. What are these things? Gold and silver, platinum and gas and petrol and whatever else you have, and the flowers and the produce and the plants and whatever else there is, uh, including the animals. Allah says, all of this is valuable whilst you are on the earth. The minute you close your eyes, everything loses its value. How you used it becomes the value thereafter. Or becomes of value thereafter. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, you know, whilst you are on this earth, make use of whatever we have blessed you with in order that the day you die, everything is focused upon the day I die, the day I die. Everything should be focused. And you should think about it every single day, the day I die. When I die this, when I die, I'd like this to happen, that to happen. How will it happen? It will only happen if you have the currency enough to purchase it. And that currency is deeds, salah, worshipping Allah alone, following as much as you you can changing yourself disciplining yourself for the betterment and for the, the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so Allah says it is he who created the earth as a settlement the skies as a canopy imagine the cover the sky one day it will crack and we believe it because it's in the Quran otherwise we would never imagine it Allah says one day the sky will crack you know, we have pockets of air. When you fly, you can feel them. Sometimes there's clear air turbulence, they call it. And it's quite dangerous, to be honest with you. You know, the plane can drop quite a lot of feet and you can, you know, really feel so scared at that moment. And you look outside and there are no clouds. Pockets of air. That's Allah. He created the sky in a way that He wishes. How? Subhanallah. Some we may have discovered and some we will never discover. So Allah says, we made this for you. It is for you. So you enjoy it whilst you're here in the obedience of Allah. The earth is there. You will be able to own a little chunk of it only to survive for a few more years. And after that, you won't own a droplet of the earth, but you will be elsewhere. If you have the currency to purchase the property there, it will be yours. If not, perhaps through our mercy, we might grant it to you. That's what we are looking forward to. May Allah grant it to us through His mercy. But at the same time, there will be some losers who may not get anything. So this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, then I have created you. I made you. Allah is reminding us, who made you? I made you. So someone says, no, my mother gave birth to me. Well, Allah made your mother. And Allah made your mother's mother and mother's mother's mother and so on up to the beginning of time. Subhanallah. So Allah says, I made you and I didn't just make you. I gave you your identity. That's what he says. Every single human being from the beginning to the end has a different identity. Completely, totally. Identifiable, absolutely. That's what Allah says. He gave you this surah of yours, this image of yours. He gave it to you and he made it so beautiful. He perfected it such that he put every organ exactly where it is perfect to be. So your eyes are where they're supposed to be or where the best place for them is. And at the same time, the, the nose, ears, lips, tongue, teeth, nails, fingers, hands, arms, forearms, biceps, triceps, whatever you'd like to call them, your legs, your toes, everything. Allah placed it and He said, we have perfected it. Perfect. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and protect our children. And may He grant those with deformity cure. I mean, that also is a test of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a test for certain levels of people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for the parents and for others. And may Allah never test us with tests that are difficult for us to pass. I mean, so my mothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, we formed you and perfected your form. So think about it. We own you completely, totally. And then Allah says, and we provided you with good things. We gave you. This is what I was saying at the beginning, that all these verses are connected to worshipping Allah alone, calling out to Allah. He gave you and I what I have. The jacket I'm wearing is from Allah. Nobody can say, okay, you bought it from this shop and that shop. Well, complete the equation. Then you'll know where it came from. Don't just mention part of the equation. Allahu Akbar. If you say plus one plus one equals three, you're missing out the one at the beginning. Allahu Akbar.
So this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we are the ones who provided you with all the good things that you have. Don't only concentrate on what we have not given you. We've given you so much and we've given you so many good things. Perhaps sometimes when we've given you the good things, you've forgotten us. So we had to take some of that away in order for you to remember us once again. That's the plan of Allah. Allah says, that is Allah, your Lord. Then blessed is Allah, Lord of the worlds. Blessed is Allah. Great is Allah. Subhanallah. He is the ever living. He is the ever living. Certain questions we don't ask. Like for example, with this brain of ours, we may never understand certain matters of the unseen. We won't. So the same applies when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we believe whatever he has informed us about himself, certain things he did not inform us and certain things he's told us that we may not understand. We just believe them as he has put them and we don't question further. So when he says he is ever living, we, we believe that he is ever living. He was there before the beginning and he will be there after the end. <clears throat> How? I don't know. He knows, but I believe. So this is why certain people start questioning out of their or the little minds they have, lack of belief that they have, they say, okay, so if Allah created everything, then who created Allah? Well, we say that question is blasphemous. You don't question it. That's what makes you a believer. You just believe that Allah was there before everything. Because you know what? I cannot explain it with my brain and you will never understand it with your brain. And this is the whole core of the test known as belief. Belief is in the unseen. If I saw it, you know, they say seeing is believing. But the truth is, when it comes to belief in Allah, in the unseen, that is known as belief. The difference between Iman and Islam, if you look at the pillars of either one of them, Islam has five pillars. All of them can be seen. Iman has six pillars. None of them can be seen. So Iman means to believe in the unseen. That's what makes you a mu'min. If not, why call yourself a believer? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us pure belief. And the Semitic faiths share this in common. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they have this in common, they share it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He is the ever living. There is no deity except Him. None worthy of worship besides Allah. Thalikum Allah. Subhanallah. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allah says, Hu al hayy la ilaha illahu. None worthy of worship besides Allah. So call upon Him. Be sincere to Him in religion. Call out to him alone. Sincerely worship him alone. Be sincere to him in religion, in faith. And ikhlas here means to worship Allah alone. Once again, Allah is talking about worshiping me alone. But people get upset when we say you cannot worship the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa When we say you cannot worship the saint in the grave. When we say you cannot look at a man and think that he is a stepping stone between you and Allah. No. We do believe in the intercession of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the day of Qiyamah. But that does not mean we worship him. No. We believe he will intercede on our behalf. If only we have tried our best to follow his footsteps. Then... May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the intercession of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But that does not mean we worship him. If we worship the prophets, what makes us different from the Christians who worship Jesus, who was a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And what makes us different from the others who worship their prophets and their saints? And they worship sticks and stones and anything that depicted power. May Allah forgive us and may he strengthen us. So this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says... He is the ever-living. There is none worthy of worship besides Him. So call upon Him alone and be sincere to Him in religion. All praise is indeed due to Allah, Lord of the worlds. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. All praise is due to Allah, Lord of the worlds. And we explain the term Rabbun. So He's not just my Rabb. He is Rabbul Alameen. He is the Rabb of everything, of all the worlds, everything, whatever He has made. And guess what? I will never ever know what exactly Allah has made. The details of every item Allah has made, I will never know. Allah knows that. You know, some who've been out, perhaps snorkeling and so on, in the ocean or the sea, may have seen the marine life there. Unique, amazing. You start wondering how powerful Allah is. Because you see the different colors and the different creatures and the different plants and animals. You, you cannot distinguish sometimes between fish and plant. Because you don't even know. That's Allah. Allah says, that 
is just a test for you. Oh man, look at our creatures. You think that you were just here for nothing, just by chance and coincidence? No ways. We made you and we know what we're doing. And we have full control of absolutely everything. Allah, the ever-living. Allahu Akbar. We are the ones who die. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ever-living. Let's move on. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, once again, He says the same thing, but the wording is a little bit different. Look at what He says. Qul, say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, tell them. What should he tell them? Inni nuhitu an a'buda alladheena tad'oona min duni Allah lamma ja'aniya al-bayyinatu min Rabbi. I have been forbidden to worship those whom you call upon besides Allah. Once the clear proofs have come to me. And my Lord, Allahu Akbar, once the clear proofs have come to me from my Lord, and I have been commanded to submit to the Lord of the worlds. Him and Him alone. Allahu Akbar. Look at how clear the verses of the Quran are. This is why I always say, he who reads the meanings of the Quran can never be fooled by anyone. You know when someone is fooling you, they call towards their, worshipping them themselves. No. If you find a man claiming to know faith and he calls you towards himself, he's a deviant. But he should be calling you towards Allah. Because he is in as great a need of the mercy of Allah as you are. And this is the truth. So we call out to Allah and we call towards Allah, not towards ourselves. This is the difference. And this is why if people fall for that and they begin to think that Allah has asked us to worship another human being or another creature of his or any other creature of his or any creature of his, then we know that we are on the wrong path. Because these are the verses of Allah. O oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it's your duty to tell them something. What should you tell them? Tell them that indeed, I have been forbidden to worship those you call upon besides Allah. Because the clear proofs have come to me from my Lord. And I have been commanded to submit to Allah, the Rabb of absolutely everything. Rabb of the worlds of al Alamin. Beautiful verse. May Allah help us to distinguish between right and wrong and may He make us tread on that path, the path of goodness. I mean. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says how He made us and how He created us. He says, Allahu ladhi khalaqakum. It is Allah. It is He who created you. No one else. None has created you besides Allah. No one even claims that they created you. So here is the claim. It is Allah. And it is Allah who definitely did. So it's not just a claim, but it's issuing a statement of reality. Subhanallah. Allah says, it is he who created you from dust and then from a sperm drop and from a clinging clot. These are the various levels of creation, the different phases that the creation of man has passed through. So initially from dust, then from a sperm drop and then from a clinging clot. Then he brings you out as a child. Allahu Akbar. May Allah make it easy for all those who, who are bearing children, who have born children, those who haven't. May Allah make it easy for them too. Amen. He brings you out as a child. Then He develops you. Now, if we were to go deeper into every single phase, we would come through looking at the creation of Allah and understanding His greatness. Let's just take a quick look at the womb. What happens? Subhanallah. How the child develops, how the child is fed, how the organs develop. This is a miracle of Allah. It's part of our belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yet there are some who say, oh, that's nature. It's nature. Well, that, why doesn't it happen in a motor vehicle where suddenly in the boot of my Bugatti, there's another one growing exactly as this one. And the wheels are Pirelli as well. Allahu Akbar. May Allah forgive our foolishness. As brainy as we become, we also go backward. Allahu Akbar. I hope nobody goes back and opens their boot on the way out. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. My mothers and sisters, look at this beautiful verse where Allah is telling us, Hey, we made you. We made you from dust initially. And then a sperm drop. And then the clinging clot. At one stage it was just a clot. At 120 days the soul is blown in. Subhanallah. You know, some people ask a question. How come the heart starts pumping much earlier than 120 days? And at 120 days the soul is said to have been blown in. Well, the truth is, in Islam, the heart and the soul are not always connected. 
So the heart begins to pump as an organ, but there is no life in that particular fetus until the soul is blown in at 120 days. And this is according to the hadith of Rasulullah and also the tafsir of certain verses of the Quran. So 120 days, the soul is blown in. Before that, it's just a clot. And from a clot, it develops into organs and the organs start functioning as well. You know, sometimes they call a person brain dead. They say, this person's brain dead. The heart is pumping. Everything's okay. But they're brain dead. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a deep understanding. So this is something unique where Allah is just reminding us to say, hang on, look back at your creation. Then we brought you forth as a child. You knew absolutely nothing. And then he develops you that you reach your time of maturity. So your development comes. Each one has a peak. The bulk of the peak is perhaps 40 years. According to the Quran, when you're at 40, you actually have now peaked. If you haven't learned a thing or two, then you have not fulfilled your role in this dunya, in this world. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we created you as a child. You knew nothing. You were taught whatever was around you. And it was up to you at a certain point when we developed your mind to start asking questions and to search for the truth and to look for it and to find it and adopt it and fulfill it and follow it no matter what the world had to say. <coughs> Subhanallah. How beautiful. How beautiful. So then Allah says, He develops you that you reach your time of maturity. Then further. Then further. That you become elders. If Allah gives you longer life, shuyukha, then you become old people. You know the sheikh, the old man, the elderly. The term sheikh refers to a few things. One is it refers to a person who's old, like what is being mentioned here in this verse. Shuyukh, those who are elderly, they've they are aged, and at the same time. The term sheikh also could refer to a knowledgeable person and sometimes it can just refer to a wealthy person and sometimes it's just a person from a certain lineage within the Arabian Peninsula. So the term sheikh refers to so many different things and here it refers to those who are old, elderly. Allah says, sometimes he grants you the chance to become old. And this is why the next part of the verse Allah says, وَمِنْكُمْ مَنْ يُتَوَفَّى مِنْ قَبْلُ And from amongst you, is he who is taken in death before that. So some don't reach that old age. May Allah have mercy on us. My mothers and sisters, listen to this powerful statement. What age you die at is irrelevant. Where you have gone thereafter is what is of relevance. So if someone died at 20, no problem for as long as they're in Jannah. Because we will only live a few years more than that. And if we die and go to the other place, we will be losers. So there's no merit in living long in this world. If you are heading to hellfire. I hope we see the picture. So when someone dies at a young age, just ask yourself, have they led a good life? If they had led a life of obedience of Allah, then Alhamdulillah. And ask Allah to have mercy on them. So the relevance is not connected to how long you've been on the earth, but it's whether you've passed the test or not, because it's just a short test. Someone can write their test in half an hour and walk out of the exam room with full marks, and another person will be writing up to the end when the bell rings and they're kicked out, and they can still fail. That's all up to Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. You know, it's like when we were writing examinations, sometimes people fill in so much and every little while they're asking for more paper, more paper. And we used to look at them and think these are the brainy of the lot until they come out with 10%, 15% and we start thinking they were just writing their life story and yet they were asked a mathematical equation to explain. Allahu Akbar. There's no merit in that. You can write as much as you want. Write the correct thing. <laughs> then even if you write it in one sentence, you've succeeded. May Allah help us. So when we look at death, we need to understand it's in the hands of Allah. We have no role to play in it by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But live your life in such a way that no matter when you go, you go to the right place. People will cry that whom you have left behind. And guess what? A hundred years from now, they won't even know you existed. They won't. Perhaps maybe a few might for a few more years. But take it to 200 years from now. My evidence is 200 years before us. How many of your own family do you remember? I don't even know the names of some of my forefathers. Allahu Akbar.
And I'm sure it's the same with all, all of us. So my mothers and sisters, this is the power of Allah. So Allah says, He created you from dust, from the sperm drop, from the clinging clot. He brought you forth as a child. He granted you the ability to develop or He allowed you to reach the time of your maturity and further to become elders. And amongst you is He who is taken before arriving at that age, before that, so that you reach a specified term, fixed. The decreed time of your death is reached. And perhaps you will use reason. Perhaps you will use your reason. Allah grants you the ability. You see, when, you're, when we're young, sometimes we don't have understanding. Babies, children, they call them infants. Even on, on an aeroplane, you pay for the seat 70% perhaps because the child is below 12. Subhanallah. Well, the minute you arrive at the age of maturity, puberty, then you need to know it's now your duty to start finding out. And Allah says, perhaps... You will use reason. Allah has given you the ability to reason. So Allah says, He it is who gives life and causes death. And when He decrees a matter, He says, Be, and it is. When Allah decrees a matter, He, he but says to it, Be, and it is. That's the decree of Allah. Kun is what Allah says. Like in the Arabic language, they say, Amruhu bayn al-kafi wa noon His instruction is between the kaf and the noon. All he says is, Kun, be, and it is. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. May He have mercy on us. May He grant us cure. May He grant the people who are struggling and suffering across the globe ease. May He grant them victory. The people of Gaza who are suffering, Wallahi, they are in our hearts, in our du'as, in our minds. We bleed for them. We try to help them as best as we can. But we need to learn a lesson from it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that lesson. So Allah says, Do you not consider those who dispute or do you not consider those who dispute concerning the signs of Allah, how are they averted? Allahu Akbar. Alam tara ila alladheena yujadiluna fi ayati Allah anna yusrafoon. Inshallah, next week perhaps we will go through that and we will go through how the people are diverted and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says we will punish them and we will give them some severe, severe punishment. It is such a vivid description that it brings tears to the eyes and it sends shivers down our spines. But my mothers and sisters, let me say one thing. We have a lot of hope in the mercy of Allah. We are thankful that we are on the right path. We see the goodness. We worship Allah alone. We prepare for the akhirah. We hope in the mercy of Allah. We ask His forgiveness and we are guaranteed that if we ask forgiveness, genuinely regretting what we've done, then Allah has forgiven us. May Allah never ever make us from those who lose hope. May He never make us from those who feel like we are write-offs. Oh, we are written off completely. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every single one of us until we meet again sometime. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. A quick point, my mothers and sisters. Uh, inshallah, we will be distributing CDs to every single one of you here. Uh, they have all the contents of the CDs, the recent series on the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from Malaysia. Alhamdulillah, they are ready for distribution and you may take. You may also copy and uh, make as many copies as you want to give others. Jazakumullah khair.